Hello and welcome to Varsity Blue, Alex Prasad, David Nows, Scott Wagner, and guys, doesn't look nearly as good, at least the outlook for this season, after Saturday's performance. No, it was a win, but it was a scary win, and I think we saw a lot of the things that we worried about with this Michigan team exposed on Saturday. Exposed by a 1AA, or yeah. actually FCS, school. Yeah, not, not, a, not a team you would expect to give Michigan trouble, but... Uh, a lot of holes exposed on defense, like David is saying. Uh, a lot of fears that you had going into the season uh, realized on the Michigan defense on Saturday. And you would have thought those would be exposed by maybe Big East favorite UConn or independent favorite, as always, <laughs> Notre Dame. But, of course, not the case. And, of course, Notre Dame losing to Michigan State, little brother, this past weekend on a dramatic call. We'll talk about that later. Maybe a little bit too dramatic. And then... <laughs> and then UConn losing to Temple, perennial football power Temple, makes you wonder if those three wins, you know, they'll mean something different, at least than they did a week ago. But David, take us through what happened on Saturday at the Big House, Apocalypse of Earth. And you see Overcast Day at Michigan Stadium, a few UMass fans here in attendance, and they saw their team perform pretty well early and often as the men men start with a 14-yard completion on third and seven, and a play later. You'll see Caleb Viola knock that through for a 29-yard field goal, Minutemen up early, 3-0. On the ensuing possession, Denard Robinson puts this pass up for grabs as it, it's intercepted by Kumar Davis of UMass. Um, not for long, though. You see Michael Shaw put in this one-yard touchdown, giving the Wolverines a 7-3 lead. And then on the next drive, UMass answers. Quick 10-yard score by Jonathan Hernandez, 10-7 UMass as they take the lead. Two squads trade punts. Denard Robinson shows us a little bit of what we've seen pretty much all season, 16-yard run. However, Seth Brookhusen misses the 38-yarder. The score stays at 10-7 UMass, and things only get worse from here on out. Jonathan Hernandez adds 15 more yards. He had 114 on the day. And then three plays later, he caps off the drive with a nine-yard touchdown run. That's his second on the day, and all of a sudden, the UMass lead sits at 10. There's only a minute 17 left in the half, as you can see right there on the scoreboard. Fortunes turned very quickly though for the Michigan Wolverines. First play from scrimmage on the following drive, 66 yard touchdown pass as you'll see. Denard Robinson to Daryl Stone I'm here, he outruns pretty much everyone on the UMass defense. Not really known for his speed, but there you go. The gap is close to 3, 17-14, and there's still a minute left on the game clock. First play on the next drive, and you see UMass. Big run here by John Griffin, 19 yards, but it's derailed right here by Jordan Kovacs forcing the fumble. The Wolverines recover, and they still have 45 seconds to go. Second play of this drive, and Robinson completes his pass over the middle to Junior Hemingway, also not known for his speed, but there you go, 36-yard pass play down to the 15. Three plays later, Stoneham gets another touchdown, 21-17 going into the second half and things only get better for the Wolverines. Here's Michael Shaw breaking a 35-yard touchdown run, and now it's 28-17 Wolverines. Only gets more comfortable from there. 11-yard Vincent Smith run right here. That sets up a Denard Robinson touchdown. It's 35-17 Wolverines. Tide starts to turn as we head into the fourth quarter. A seven and a half minute drive capped off by this scamper by Kyle Havens, and it's 35-24 UMass. That small gap, not enjoyed for that long, however, as this play goes for 50 yards. Michael Shaw, big cutback, nice stiff arm. And you'll see in a little bit, Denard Robinson even gets in the action for a block. Sets up a Michael Shaw touchdown run right here, as you see. We'll get to that in a second, but Denard downfield blocking, that's pretty impressive, I have to say. Here's that Michael Shaw touchdown run right up the middle, four yards, and the lead swells to 18 at 42-24. Next possession, Cam Gordon playing pretty good coverage here. Gets the pick, you would think the game's over, right? Wrong, he fumbles right there. <laughs> Ball goes right back to UMass, and they now sit on the Michigan 26. Pretty tough position for the Wolverines. They chew up, UMass chews up four and a half minutes on this drive, only going 26 yards. They score, 
and now it's 42-30. However, they would not convert the two-point conversion there. Will Hager back to punt after a three and out? Kind of bobbles that, and it's going to get blocked. UMass recovers, and that gives them the ball on the Michigan 32. We might have a game with a little over five minutes left to play. It's only a 12-point deficit. UMass doesn't really chew up a whole lot of time on this drive. Score a touchdown right there, and it's 42-37 with 2.05 remaining. However, they kind of blast this one. Must have not been practicing for this scenario. And the onside kick goes out of bounds. Michigan escapes with the win. Escape indeed, and what I mean, I don't even know where to start. And uh, we'll look at the final stats here any second. Just numbers, just abysmal. Of course, Denard played very, very well. We've come to expect that. Mike Cox and Daryl Stone with big days, showing showing some big play potential, which we always knew they had. Hadn't seen it come to fruition again. It is just UMass. But really, the story, the defense, the defense, the defense. Forget about the team. This is about the defense. This game, at least. 525 total yards for Michigan, but 439 for UMass. Time of possession, 37 minutes. 37 minutes for UMass, guys. So, obviously, topic discussion number one, the defense. Where was the defense, David? They seemed to be pretty much non-existent. 439 yards of total offense for UMass. We all expected a game like this to come along eventually. I just don't think it was it during this game. I mean... It's a UMass team that's an FCS opponent. They were 5-6 and six last year, and I just don't think we expected to see 439 yards of total offense given up to them. And no one really saw that coming. But this UMass team, to be fair, it's the fourth largest offensive line that Michigan's going to see all year, which with an undersized defense, that's going to cause some problems. Greg Robinson recruited five or six players on the UMass team. They transferred from Syracuse after he got fired. Then finally... There's five or six starters on UMass that are defectors from Northeastern's football program when Northeastern ended their football program and they all were able to transfer you know, without sitting out a year. So, and they're ranked about 15th in the FCS. So not yeah. a bad FCS team. They're not Delaware State, but still disappointing. But they are an FCS still an FCS team. team. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'll, give, uh, I'll give Massachusetts coaching staff a lot of credit for the game plan they bar into this game, especially on offense. They did a very good job researching Michigan and finding out where the holes in their team was. It's been pretty well documented as they went into the season. Michigan has trouble with misdirection because they'll have linebackers overcommit, which you saw a lot of on Saturday, a lot of uh, fake one way, go the other way with the handoffs, and a lot of slot receivers cutting towards the middle, taking advantage of an inexperienced uh, safety crew uh, with Cam Gordon uh, so young and Jordan Kovacs still a walk-on, still finding his way. Very good game planning by Massachusetts, inability to adjust by Greg Robinson, led to a lot of trouble on defense. Yeah, those misdirection stretch plays were very effective against Michigan from both UConn and Notre Dame, mm -hmm. especially in the Notre Dame game. You wonder why they didn't use that pitch more often. Well, UMass did, yeah. <laughs> and that's what would have happened had they run that play 15 or 20 times instead of just five. Um, how about Michael Shaw, though, David? A big game, that's what we've been expecting from Michael Shaw for a long time, and he did a lot of his work between the tackles too, and then it opened up. Well, he did a great job between the tackles, cutting back runs. He had a great game with over 100 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, if he would have been on your fantasy team, you would have definitely won your matchup last week. So Michael Shaw, we saw a lot of good things from him this week, but the thing is, it was against UMass, and if he can bring that to play when we come against some Big Ten teams, that would be great. But you have to take it with a token of a little apprehension going into some other games just because Michael Shaw did this against an FCS opponent. And finally, Scott, quickly, Daryl Stoneham finally caught a long pass uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that wasn't off a kickoff and yeah. did something with it. Certainly it was very clear that Michigan's team speed was superior than Massachusetts, yeah. but do you think this is perhaps a stepping stone to him to the level of play we've been expecting since he walked I mean, in here as a four-star? Not a huge game. He only had three catches, but they went for 121 yards, 40 yards a catch, and two touchdowns. Uh, and that touchdown run at the, or the, the run, the short pass, long run uh, at the end of the first half was a very big deal for Daryl Stoneham. Uh, he's had a guy who, you, he's been a guy who you could see busting out uh, for a while. Uh, I hope this is turning the corner seeing these big runs because uh, we really could use a great receiver on the end, a la Marquise Walker or Braylon Edwards. All right, well, that'll have to be all our discussion for the UMass game, thank goodness, but Coming back on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about Arizona. The state of Arizona held up pretty well against the Big Ten. Stay tuned.